land subdivisions. You know, you see a lot of developers or people getting into land subs, you know, two land subdivisions, three land subdivisions. You know, what are your thoughts there? Cheryl, I know you have a lot of experience. You have done a few land subdivisions yourself. I love, love, love land subdivisions. It was probably my sort of initial foray into, I say, proper proper development. And what I found so, and, and what I still really like about land subdivisions is that there's no emotion about a land subdivision. <laughs> and when I say yes. that, it's because that you're not land. putting a house on it that needs to be pretty or anything else. You, you're selling a piece of dirt, right? However, yes. that piece of dirt to instill in the end buyer this sense of lifestyle and it needs to be in the right place. I just find land subdivisions easier in the sense that you are cutting it up <laughs> there is, yes it's like there, a cake like a square either, cake it's like a cake thing. yeah everyone yeah. wants the 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 the, the, the rectangular sort of even size slices nobody wants the corner bits which are weird and sort of triangular shape no idea right yeah. so you <laughs> and um i like land subdivisions in in the sense that when you're doing feasibilities, what I found previously is that I can generally use a pretty good rule of thumb in terms of what my subdivision costs are. I sort of know what my subdivision costs are going to be. I know what my contributions are going to be. So doing and assessing a land subdivision site, I have found previously to be a lot easier in that in that aspect in general. Yeah. Whereas opposed to doing a townhouse development, Yes, I can ballpark what it's going to be. However, each location, depending mm. on the the quality of the build, depending on how many, you know, what the size is of the property and so on and so forth, there's a bit there are a few more variables in that. Not that you can't use a ballpark or not that you can't Definitely. do a feasibility. There's just more variables in there. So again, I personally love a good land subdivision. Because yeah. I can sort of look at it and, and I can look at a site, I can understand what percentage is going to be used for roads and I go, okay, on average, what are the size lots that are selling well and literally it's in the calculator and go, I divide it by 450 X. square meters, yeah. I will probably get these many lots. Yeah. So that's really easy from that aspect, which is what I love about that. So 100%. How about I think, you? Yeah, if you think about the residential builds or townhouses or single story houses as well, you know, multi units, you know, that people call, the biggest care factor there is the neighbors and the neighborhood characters that the council impose on you. Um, and that's where the biggest risk is, right? You know, um, it, it's funny, like we're doing a site right now, a development in Frankston had no issues, the council approved it, it's a four unit site. I have a friend literally at the end of that street, same, similar site, did the four units and 56 objections, like like same street, right? I could not believe yeah. it when he, he told me that. And so I was like, Jesus, you know, I think I got a free pass because <laughs> I don't know, it's the same neighbors, right? I don't know how they let me through and just hold him like ransom to his side going all the way to weekend and literally months difference, right? You know, I passed through and he was waiting for his notice of decision. So it's funny, like, you know, the neighbors and the neighborhood character and the councils as to how they can respond to some of these things, you know, depending on how you're planning your site and how you're cutting and what sort of offsets are you using or how are you using your building envelope. I think the other important thing is what I felt always is that land subdivisions, while they are capital intense, you can stage them to get the profits from the first one to pay off the second one and the profits from the second one to pay off the third one. And so while they would look, you know, I would use the word ginormous. My kid taught me this new word ginormous, <laughs> but uh, you can you basically stage it. You don't know the word ginormous, Mox? <laughs> I, I didn't know the word ginormous. Yeah. I thought there was a giant and enormous, you know, ginormous. Yeah, that's, that's a new ginormous. word. So, so yeah, while they are capital intense, it just makes sense that, you know, you stage it and basically make the money along the way. Whereas uh, if you think about residential developments or townhouses, they are capital intense all the way through. You know, there are there is no staging per se, unless you're doing like 25 townhouses or 30 townhouses or 50 townhouses. And, you know, there are some of those developments there. Hey!